Martin, the two great areas of cosmology are the beginning and end of the universe, and a lot of our efforts are focused on the beginning. But some have also talked about the end, uh, as you have, and what are the prospects? Uh, a, uh, an expansion into the ultimate freeze, as we say, the collapse into the ultimate fry. We seem to think now the expansion, the accelerating expansion of the universe would favor the former. But what we, can we begin to say seriously about our universe, at least, and what are the prospects that it will end one way or another? Well, let's start with our Earth and Sun. Uh, we know that our Sun is less than halfway through its life. And I think this in itself is a very important concept for the public, because even those who are happy with the idea that we're the outcome of four billion years of evolution somehow tend to think that we are the end of it. We are the culmination. But no astronomer can believe that, because even the Earth has a future of billions of years ahead of it. And evolution, therefore, in a post-human era, is going to be just as prolonged and just as marvelous as what's happened up to now. So we humans should not think of ourselves as a culmination. We're maybe not even a halfway stage of the evolutionary process. And that's just thinking of what's happening to our solar system. But that's a very important concept, I think, especially for theologians to take on board. But if we look still further ahead, then, of course, uh, even when our sun has died, then the galaxy has a long life ahead of it, and uh, many stars live much longer than the sun. But the key question is, is our universe going to go on expanding forever, or will it be collapsed to a so-called big crunch? In fact, I wrote a paper more than 40 years ago on the idea of a big crunch. Yeah. But the common view now, based on the best evidence and the best guess, is that the universe will go on expanding forever, and that galaxies, which we can see with our telescopes, will not merely get further away as the universe expands, but they will speed up. And eventually, a few tens of billions of years from now, those galaxies will have uh, disappeared because the redshifts will have uh, increased towards infinity. And so all we'd be left with is the uh, region which now encompasses us and Andromeda and a few nearby galaxies as a single gravitating region in an otherwise empty universe. And the longest lived stars will keep shining feebly for a trillion years or so, um, but eventually even they will die. So this is uh, the uh, uh, best guess for the long range future, but there are other possibilities. Um, one idea is that perhaps the uh, so-called cosmic propulsion, the dark energy, may not stay constant. It could get smaller, it could even reverse, leading to a big crunch. That can't be ruled out, but I think that would be 20 billion years from now at the latest. Um, there's a speculative and perhaps rather unlikely alternative called the big rip. The idea here is that the uh, cosmic propulsion gets bigger and bigger and eventually accelerates the universe more and more um, to the extent that eventually the solar system gets disrupted and even things our size get torn apart yes. by the cosmic propulsion overwhelming the uh, forces of chemistry that hold us together. So that's an, another scenario, but the best bet is that our expanding cosmos will go on forever and get ever darker and ever emptier. And in that process, ultimately, even black holes will evaporate. And so all we would be left with is random radiation getting further and further apart. Well, we'd have random radiation. Um, and also, uh, we don't know whether some of the particles of dark matter live forever. Um, if they do, then there would always be this uh, uh, region, which is the remnants of our local group of galaxies. But whether complexity could survive in that stage, we don't know. Is there a possibility that complexity could survive? I think we should be agnostic about that, because uh, uh, after all, it's hard to predict technology even a century ahead. Mm. And I think uh, if we're looking that far ahead, we've no idea. I think if we think of post-human evolution in any form, it may well be silicon-based rather than organic. And once that happens, then uh, uh, perhaps the restructuring of large parts of this uh, uh, volume uh, could be achieved. So I think we can't conceive what will happen at all. 
but we should realize that we humans are just the early stage. Most people would look upon the future expansion of the universe as you've described it as extremely pessimistic. Well, I think when people talk like that, they are confused because they're conflating two very, very different timescales. I think uh, the timescale on which the universe changes is longer than the timescale of which we've evolved from protozoa. And the timescale for our species to survive is less than a million years if it depends on Darwinian natural selection, but probably only a thousand years if post-human evolution is driven by technology. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a huge difference between the time scale on which uh, uh, humans are going to evolve, which is measured in thousands of years or less, and these time scales we're talking about. So I think uh, um, to use words like optimistic or pessimistic uh, implies uh, that the emotions of these post-human creatures who we can't visit at all bear any resemblance to our own.